Hello again, I would like to welcome you to another tutorial. In which one, in this tutorial, we'll talk about cascading style sheets. I've set up this HTML page based on the tags that we have already learned in the previous tutorials. So in this page, as you have noticed, I've created a theme of the page considering the fruits. And I'll use this page to talk about the three different kinds of CSS that you can implement within an HTML page. In the past, we have looked into an inline CSS, but we're gonna look at inline CSS again today. Then we'll be looking at the embedded CSS, and we'll be looking at the external CSS. Inline CSS pretty much means that the CSS properties are written in the line of the tag itself. The embedded CSS means that the CSS properties are written in the head portion of the document. The external means that you have an external file with a CSS extension, file extension, and then you link that external file into your existing HTML page. So those are the three different kinds of CSS. So in this tutorial, we're gonna see a brief example of using each one of them, and also when should you use one over the other. Now let's say in this particular setting, I would like my paragraph to have some CSS properties. So I'll just gonna move this, the word this onto the next line so I could utilize this entire line to write my CSS properties. And as we've learned in the past, to implement CSS inline properties, we start with a property of a tag called style. And some of the CSS properties that we've learned in the past includes color, and we'll be introducing some more properties today. So let's say I would like my paragraph to be in blue color. So I will going to implement CSS inline blue. So inline properties are usually written if you would like a particular entity uh, to have certain CSS properties and you would like only that particular entity to have that CSS property. If you would like to apply properties on a page level, then you go in the embedded, that means on the head. So let's say if I come up here in the head, and I would like to write CSS properties, then I must introduce a special tag called style, which is telling the HTML interpreter that whatever comes between these two lines, it should be considered to be the CSS styles. Now, this is where I'll be starting to write my CSS properties. Let's say I want my H2 to appear in green color. So this is how you write embedded CSS properties. You write the name of the tag, like in this case it's H2. You take help from starting and closing curly braces. Okay, the squigglies, opening and closing, curly braces. And then within the curly braces, you write a property name, colon, a value, exactly the same way that you would do an inline. Okay. So this is how you will write embedded. And then I let's say if I want that all my ULs will appear in red color, okay? So throughout my document, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter how many ULs I have, they're all going to appear in red color. Now, since I only have one UL tag and one H2 tag, it doesn't really tell much. I could have written it inline or embedded. So let me try with LI because I have four LIs. If I were to go individually with each one of the LI, it would have taken me four inline statements to convert all LIs into red color. So what I did, I went into style and just set it, write it down once, that whenever you see an LI tag, just, just use the red color. So now I'm gonna try with these two properties, um, an inline and embedded. The embedded is one in this head, and the inline is one that is in line number 11 in the line of the tag. So we're gonna now go into run and say, okay, run it in Firefox. So here I have an output in the Firefox, as you can see. Um, I said my heading two should be in green color, so it's in green color. Um, I said my um, paragraph should be in blue color, which was on line 11, as you can see that's uh, embedded, uh, that's in line, that's in blue color. And then I said my allies should be in red color, so all the LI tags have automatically taken up the red color. So the, here we have seen an implementation, one particular implementation off. 
using embedded versus inline. And you can also notice here that H2, I have used an H2, which is in green color, but my H4 is not in green color, it's in the default color of the web browser, which in this case is black. So now let's say I would like all my H2s and H4s to take green color, so I do not have to write individual um, styles in the embedded portion for H2 and H4. For example, what I'm trying to say is, if I would like H2 and H4 to be both in green color, I don't have to write two lines of statements. I don't have to repeat myself. Rather, what I can do is, let me get rid of this extra line that I created. All I need, can do is, I can just put a comma after H2 and write H4. That implies that either you find H2 or you find H4, just reuse green color. So now we're gonna try that. We'll say, okay, let's go to run and launch in Firefox. And here you go, H2 as well as H4, they both appeared in green color. Now, let me talk about external CSS files. When do you use that? So you use inline when you're talking about one particular tag. You use embedded when you would like the style to flow through the entire page. And we use external when we would like the style to flow through the entire site. So if you would like all your pages to look alike and have similar look and feel, why should we repeat ourselves by writing it in embedded format or inline until and, other, uh, un until and unless we have one specific need in a page? But if it's a generic idea about a site, write it in external. So what I would like to do in, I'll, I've opened a new file. I haven't saved it yet. So I'm gonna first of all save it. So I'll get just gonna file, save. And in my file type, I'm gonna use cascading style sheets, which is .css. And I'm gonna call this file fruits.css. Now, when you're writing a CSS file, you do not have to write HTML tag. You do not have to write head tag. You do not have to write body tag. All you need to do is list the tag name and the properties, just like we did it uh, right in here in the fruits.htm file, exactly the same way. So let's say if I want my allied properties throughout my website to appear in red, that instead of using in embedded format, I'll, I'll just cut this line so that I, I would not have to type it again. And I'll just take it to fruits.css and I'll paste it here. Okay, so what I'm trying to say is, whenever you encountered an li tag, use the color red, okay? Whenever you encounter an h2 tag, I've already given the color out in the other file, but here I'm setting the text align to be center. So what happens is if you have a portion of the properties defined in the local file and the portion of the properties for the same tag defined in an external, it just takes a combination of the two. However, you have to be careful that if I also give out the color property, color, let's say I say orange, now, the browser will going to use its priority list. The priority list states the closer the property is to the tag, the higher up the order it is. For example, external file is the farthest from the tag, so it's the lowest priority. The second level of the priority is embedded because it's at least in the same file, and the closest is inline. So if you have given a tag, a color in external, a different color in embedded, a different color in inline, then the inline will, color will always supersede. So in this case, I have given an orange color in my CSS file, but in the embedded, I've given it a green color. So since green color is embedded, which is closest to the tag, that will going to supersede. If I go ahead in H2, and in particular I say in line that I would like to use maroon or gray or silver, then whatever color I use in inline will gonna supersede the embedded. So that's how it, it's, it's uh, um, uh, prioritized the list. So now here is my CSS file. That is an external file. I'll save the changes. Now we're gonna learn about how you can embed or link the two because it's extremely important. The HTML file doesn't really know that there is an external file out there that I should link to. So we must come back to the HTML file and this goes right up in the head portion, anywhere in the head. So 
I can go um, somewhere in the head right after the title. And we need a special tag over here we call link, which has uh, some bunch of properties, which includes um, hypertext reference, which includes what kind of reference it is, and what type of file are we trying to reference. So in this case, the name of the file that I'm referencing is fruits.css. And the kind of a file is style sheet. Okay. And the file simply contains either text or CSS. These are the only three properties that I need to set. And my file is linked with the other file. Now notice my file, my existing file, does not define the alignment of H2, does not define the color for LI. However, now when I'm going to try to run it in Firefox, this is how my page looked before I refresh. And this is how it looks now after the refresh. Now notice, LI is still maintaining the red color. And you can't really tell if the red color is coming from the local file or an external file. But what is noticeable over here is H2, which was not aligned center, is now being aligned center. However, you cannot still tell if these properties are coming from the local file or an external file. Even if from the local file, are these inline or are these embedded? So that basically are the three different ways of incorporating CSS in your HTML document. So always remember, always make the decision by your needs. Do you want to do it at one particular tag? Do you want to do it at the page level? Or do you want to do it at the site level? And always remember, the closest the property is to the tag, the higher the priority of the property will be. So as we continue with the other tutorials in CSS, we're going to explore some more properties so that you can learn a little bit more about what CSS can do for you. That's all for me for now. See you pretty soon.